Welcome to the tutorial on master slave JK flip flop. Since you have the output of the master slave SR flip flop, which is undefined upon returning the control input to zero, that is when S and R is equal to one. If you observe the timing diagram here, nowhere I have shown the timing diagram when both S and R are equal to one. In this particular timing diagram, that undefined case is not been illustrated. So because we have an undefined case when the control input is 0 and S and R to be equal to 1, it is necessary to avoid this particular condition because it is an undefined case. So what does master slave JK flip flop does is it will not allow its two inputs to be simultaneously 1. So this results in toggling of the output of the flip flop that is if the present state is 1 then the next state is 0 while if the present state is 0 then the next state will be equal to 1. So we basically make use of the master slave JK flip flop so that we can ensure that there is a toggling of the output so that we can avoid the undefined condition of S and R to be equal to 1 in the master slave SR flip flop. You can see the master slave JK flip flop here. You have the gated SR latch, you have the gated SR latch here. So you have two gated SR latches. In addition to that you have AND gates and you have an inverter. An inverter is used because if you want to apply a clock input signal to be equal to 0 here the output or the inverted output of that has to be given to the slave. So here if you observe the J and the K inputs of the flip flop will have the effect of setting and resetting the flip flop. So let me start with the operation when the master slave JK flip flop is in its first state that is state 1 that is when C is equal to 0 and J and K is equal to logic 1. So when J and K is equal to logic 1, when J and K is equal to logic 1 and you are assuming that initially Q and Q bar to be equal to 1 and 0, what will happen to the output of this particular AND gate is that you can see the way the JK flip flop is having the AND gates provided with the inputs. So you can see that one of the input to the AND gate is J whereas the other input is Q bar. So if I am considering this to be equal to 1 and this to be equal to 1, the other input to the AND gate is equal to 0. So 0 ANDed with 1 will be giving me an output 0. Whereas in this case K is equal to 1 and the other input is Q which is equal to 1. So 1 into 1 is equal to 1. So I have at the SR 0 and 1 being appeared and the clock that is given is 0. So as a result what happens is that when the clock is equal to 0, the feedback of the output of this particular AND gate will be 0 and this one will be equal to 1 and the net effect is that S will be equal to 0 and R will be equal to 1. And since C is equal to 0, these inputs will not have any effect on the state of the master. That is because the clock is equal to 0. Next let us see what happens when the clock is equal to 1. So when we have the clock to be equal to 1 which is now indicated in this color that is the green color, the master will reset, okay. The master will reset while the slave will be disabled. Previously when the clock was 0, the master was disabled and the, and the slave was enabled. Whereas now when the clock is equal to 1, the master will be enabled and the slave will be disabled. So because the slave is disabled, this will remain in the previous state. 
So when C is equal to 0 again, the contents of the master will be transferred to the slave causing the new state of the master slave JK flip flop to become 0 state. So thus what we can say is that the output of the master slave JK flip flop will be toggled when J is equal to 1 and K is equal to 1 as a result of the control signal changing from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Now let me assume that the master slave JK flip flop is at state 0 that is J is equal to 1 and K is equal to 1 and clock is equal to 0. So Q is equal to 0 and Q bar is equal to 1. So as a result what will happen is that S will be equal to 1 and R will be equal to 0. So when now you are going to make clock to be equal to 1, the master will enter its state 1 which is subsequently transferred to the slave when the clock changes from 1 to 0. Again the state of the JK master slave flip flop will be toggled when J and K will be equal to 1. If you refer to the function table, we can simplify whatever explanation that we have done earlier. If J and K is equal to 0, 0 and you are applying a clock pulse, you obtain at the output Q and Q bar. When it is 0, 1, you obtain it as 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, this is Q bar and this is Q. So the toggling occurs for which case? For a 1, 1 case. This was the reason why we went for a master slave JK flip flop because we had the problem with the master slave SR flip flop that when you have the condition when S and R is equal to 1, what happens is that the output is not defined. Whereas in this case, we have the toggling occurring for the case when J and K is equal to 1. That is why when I explained this particular explanation, I focused only for the case when J and K was equal to 1. Whereas for all the other cases, the operation will remain the same as that of the SR master slave flip flop. Whereas for a condition when the clock is equal to 0, irrespective of the type of J and K, you are going to get it as Q and Q bar. So coming to the timing diagram for the master slave JK flip flop, you have 0, 0, clock pulse is 0, this is 0, 1, the same thing appears across the slave that is 0, 1, Q and Q bar. When you have J to be equal to 1, K to be equal to 0, 1, 0, this is clock is 0 again, so output will be Q, Q bar, Q, Q bar was 0, 1, so 0, 1 here. This also will be Q, Q bar, so this is equal to 0, 1 here. Next, you have a 1 here, you have a 0 here. The clock is equal to 1. So when you have a combination of 1, 0, if the clock is high, then the output will be equal to 1, 0. So you can see that the clock is equal to high, output is 1, 0. But when you go to the slave part, what happens? J is equal to 1, K is equal to 0, S will be equal to 1, R will be equal to 0, QM will be equal to 1, Q bar will be equal to 0. But for the slave, C is equal to 0, that is clock is equal to 0 because master is enabled whereas slave is disabled. So QS will be equal to Q which is the previous state and QS will be equal to Q bar which is the previous state. So 0, 1. So you should remember this why we are obtaining the result in this way. That is because if the master is enabled, slave is disabled. If the slave is enabled, master is disabled. 